Arkansas and Tennessee take the latest hits, one of them in downtown Nashville. Paula Jones confirms she will appeal the federal court ruling that threw out her civil lawsuit against the president. And on our 50th anniversary, a look back as the torch is passed in Washington and here on the CBS Evening News. This is the CBS Evening News. With Dan Rather reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. Good evening. There is tornado terror tonight in Nashville, Tennessee. All this week we're marking our golden anniversary with a special series produced for us by the CBS News Documentary Unit. A look at some of the great events this broadcast has witnessed and reported in the past half century. Tonight the focus is the 1980s, which saw a changing of the guard at the CBS Evening News. This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening, President Reagan. Today, Uncle Walter had been there forever. News conference with some this bad was news an institution. This is my last broadcast as the anchor man of the CBS Evening News. For me, it's a moment for which I long have planned, but which nevertheless comes with some sadness. For almost two decades, after all, we've been meeting like this in the evenings, and I'll miss that. I missed it a great deal afterwards, but I had no sense at that time that I was going to miss it. And that's the way it is. Friday, March 6th, 1981. I'll be away on assignment, and Dan Rather will be sitting in here for the next few years. Good night. Well, it was put to me by one of my Texas friends, Bill Hook and Bull Johnson. Dan, the first man after Cronkite's gonna get his damn head blown off. Good evening. President Reagan still training his spotlight on the economy. I knew there wasn't gonna be another Walter Cronkite. Well, I knew to have any chance at all, to have a sh just a shot at surviving, much less thriving, as the anchor and managing editor of the CBS Evening News that I'd better be the best Dan Rather I could be. And that would be the challenge. And will, to the best of my and ability, to the best of my ability, preserve, preserve, and defend, and defend the Constitution, the Constitution of, the of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Now, I congratulate you, sir. There were a lot of great stories out there. The Reagan presidency had begun first to form and then uh, to take traction. How does Ronald Reagan use television brilliantly? They just, in a Hollywood way, put together tableaus, pictures that were so imprinted on our, the public's brains that they overrode what people were saying because they were so powerful. Americans want to feel proud of their country again and of their president. And the TV pictures say, you can. The orchestra you would have television Ronnie television and Nancy Reagan go off to Camp David every Friday on the helicopter from the South Lawn of the White House. And out they would go, she'd give them the gaze. These are all visual images that said extremely powerfully what a happy family they are. Well, we knew that he never saw his kids and he didn't even know his grandchildren. We knew that, but the picture was more powerful. No. I think we began to change the way we cover the president after that. I think everybody realized, as I did, that they were using pictures to drown us out. Takeovers, mergers, and downsizing are sometimes good for stockholders and nearly always good for a few at the top of the corporations. Others, Ray Brady reports, often get hurt. Thousands are caught in what is probably the most disruptive, unpredictable period in American corporate history. It's called downsizing. Since 1984, more than half a million white-collar workers have lost their jobs. The kind of workers who seldom got laid off even in recessions. The CBS Incorporated board met today. There was a major change in the leadership of CBS News. CBS today. Incorporated stock fell beginning in roughly the 1986-87 period. The, the company's board ownership board changed, board and things changed for CBS News. The new chief executive officer of CBS Incorporated will be Larry Tish. He went through an extended period of uh, contraction of resources. I guess that's the best euphemism we can come up with. We went through a period of cuts. We used to call it Black Wednesday, Black Friday, because they were letting 50 people go, 100 people go. These were people who had thought of CBS as their home. 
But we left the 1980s in some ways on a great coverage high for the CBS Evening News. History has taught Muscovites that nothing changes quickly in their country. This winter, whatever hopes they may have about the promise of perestroika are clouded by apprehensions about their future. What happens to them if Gorbachev fails? Framed against the soaring Brandenburg Gate, President Reagan challenged the Soviet Union to offer a dramatic signal on human rights to underscore its new policy of openness. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. In less than a year, I climbed the Berlin Wall as the Berlin Wall was coming down, and a divided Germany has disappeared. As dusk fell, the line at Checkpoint Charlie was three wide and half a mile long. More border crossings are to be opened tomorrow. Some West Germans who couldn't wait that long tried to jump across at the Brandenburg Gate. In the old days, they might have been shot. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, East Berlin. Nelson Mandela walked out of jail. Interviewed Nelson Mandela, one of the more historic figures of the 20th century. Hope was always there, and this is what saved us. Today, the thousands who saw his aging face saw the changing face of this country. Richard Schlesinger, CBS News, Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, yes. Interviewed the students in the center of Tiananmen Square. Li Peng must go, and Deng Xiaoping. He's a little emperor. And had the Chinese government pull the plug on our coverage in a desperate and failed effort to keep the word from getting out to the world what they were in the process of doing, which is hammering down the movement for freedom and democracy. What is the truth from Tiananmen Square? It just said, kill a lot of people. Kill a lot of people. Yeah. These are not the same places they were last week. There's still anger, there's still defiance, but it's muted now. It's as if people have put on masks again. They can no longer afford to demonstrate what they really feel. And interviewed Saddam Hussein in less than a month after he invaded Kuwait. Kuwait is part of Iraq. This will not stand. This will not stand, this aggression against Kuwait. Yeah, that was a pretty tremendous year or less of coverage. Those who could not flee surrendered, and they are still surrendering. This squad of Iraqis crossed the road and gave themselves up to our CBS News team while we were stopped. And there were thousands of Kuwaitis cheering troops as they entered Kuwait City late today. The war may have been America's shortest, but this parade was the biggest so far. Four hours long, 24,000 marchers. You know, that's the great thing about having a job I have and being on CBS Evening News. There's always another great story just around the corner. All this week, we've been marking the golden anniversary of this broadcast with a special series produced by Joel Bernstein and Catherine Pope of the CBS News Documentary Unit. Looking back at some of the great stories of the past half century brought into your home each evening by the people of CBS News. The series concludes now with the CBS Evening News in the 1990s and an experiment with a new format. This is the CBS Evening News. At the time, with Dan Rather and Connie Chuck. The people I were working for wanted to do this. Welcome, Connie. Thank you, Dan. They outlined why they wanted to do it, which was, we think it will make us build a larger audience for the broadcast. Uh, I thought about it decided to let's try it we all went into it in uh, good spirit and in the beginning at least in the beginning i thought it had a chance i thought it might work i don't think the broadcast was produced in a way to make use of their respective strengths and interests uh terribly well uh and the net result was you didn't get the most out of either dan or connie good night everybody see you tomorrow it just didn't work. It was a very painful thing for her, for her friends, for Dan, for CBS News. Most unfortunate. Five seconds to get a picture and then leave you alone. Among the biggest differences in the EV News today, as compared with the EV News that I first began working for, 
the CBS Evening News with Douglas Edwards in 1962 is the obsession with the ratings. It's naive to think that ratings and money don't count. Where you have to worry is when ratings and money start affecting the news decisions that are made and the stories that get on the evening news. I think the evening news... It's naive to think that ratings and money don't count. Where you have to worry is when ratings and money start affecting the news decisions that are made and the stories that get on the evening news. I think the evening news broadcasts at all three networks have done a pretty good job holding the line against that. 47 miles an hour passing Atlanta. After 266 days, like O.J. Simpson, his jury is free at last. The 1990s have marked American journalism as a whole, and television journalism in particular, with an astonishing and to me discouraging blurring of the line between entertainment and news. The allegations against Jackson surfaced last summer during his world tour. When In the Menendez case, the DA believes the boys killed their parents out of greed for their inheritance. The state attorney's office filed a two-count criminal information today charging William Kennedy Smith with violations of the Florida law. In fact, the line has become so blurred that there are days when I think it's non-existent. Am I worried about it? Absolutely. Do I think we've avoided it? No. We've tried, and I think we've done better than some, but we're not perfect. And do I know what to do about it? No. One of the remarkable factors to me, uh, despite the fact that so much of our business is geared towards amassing the largest audience possible, uh, is that the evening news broadcasts have remained fairly traditional. U.S. Marines with enough firepower to level the town escorted Somalia's two major warlords to peace talks today. Anywhere else, a display of high-tech weaponry like this would be intimidating. But this is arguably the maddest place on Earth, and logic holds no sway. The blast was catastrophic. Half of the nine-story federal building collapsed into the street, an estimated 900 people inside. It was I think we will continually reinvent the wheel and always come back the to the old values of journalism because when killed. times are serious, that's what the public will demand. For the second day running, Washington's monuments and museums were closed, but the blame game was in high gear. Republicans posed outside the National yeah, Gallery of Art to say closing it was the president's doing. The, the president blamed Republicans. <laughs> In fact, many think L.A.'s entire political establishment misjudged the rage that has been building in the neighborhoods for years. Leaders who never imagined the trouble would spread into traditionally safe areas. Amid fears that things will get worse before they get better, many shops and schools remain closed in a tense Port-au-Prince. Serb and Muslim fighters were slugging it out street to street, house to house. They were using every weapon they had. It was the happiest day of his life, Itzhak Rabin told Tel Aviv's mayor. The happiest day, he said, because so many young people came to declare themselves against violence. That was last night, and those were his last words. Today, Tel Aviv's largest square was invaded by sadness. Sadness beyond words. History walked these streets today, and in a way, the future did too, in the form of a brave 15-year-old boy his mother's son, her legacy to the country and to the world that had consumed her. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London. A television set is several things. Sometimes it's a cinema. Sometimes it's a sports arena. Sometimes it's a newsroom. Sometimes it's a chapel. And it's where America goes at moments of stress. Americans don't turn to Billy Graham and Oral Roberts. They turn to Dan Rather, Peter Jennings, and Tom Brokaw. And what they say is, tell us everything's going to be okay. The search at sea today for answers to the tragedy of TWA Flight 800. I myself said, the evening news is a dying form. And I'm wrong. It is surviving very, very nicely. This is the CBS Evening News. I'm a perfectionist. I'm a believer in excellence. 
that's part of what I got from the Cronkites, several rides and Collingwoods of the journalism world that used to be. We get together in an area called the Fishbowl, which is our decision-making room, with myself, the executive producer, Jeff Fager, our top assistants, and the director of the program. And Simon Arthrell. And we put together a detailed lineup of what the broadcast will contain. Why do we need 155 for this piece? Well, I'll tell you what we have. And is this a day where we could just run the picture in a cut line and move on? Otherwise, I think I would say yes, but here's what makes this different. And then at 6.30 Eastern time, every night, ready or not, the red light goes on, and we start doing the evening news. This is the CBS Evening News. To zoom in, ready to dissolve to three. With Dan Rather reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. Q Dan, zoom in. Good evening. The U.S. 16, Justice Department may seek federal maximize. charges against the two schoolboys accused in the deadly school shooting spree in Jonesboro, Arkansas. This would be. I, I love journalism. I love the news. I have a great passion for news. One of the things we love to do in this broadcast is take you places, especially take you to out of the way places to see different ways of life. Let's take in track up. It's the rickshaw. There are 24,000 of them here, and they've been a mainstay of Calcutta street life for most of this century. Take three, Q Dan. Three drift out. And that's part of our world. It's all 34. Audio zoom out two. 33 B. Track from the top. Take. Very nice broadcast. Nice everybody. job, Eric. Very good, everybody. We'll start on eight okay. six, seven, like, well, I go home happy every day. Thank you. Yeah, very well. Because I can be dumb as wall painted by a lot of things, but I'm at least smart enough to know I'm really lucky to have this job.